All right, guys, we're at the point of the season where we get a chance finally to upload the TV shows that aired on ESPN2 and Discovery Channel to you guys on YouTube if you hadn't seen them yet. This is a great episode, and this episode is presented by our great partner and friends at Manscaped. More about that in just a minute. But this episode here, this is a little one-on-one -on -one grudge match with my good old buddy, Matt Airy. That's right. There's always a little tension between him and I all year long. We're going to let it all hang out in this episode, so let's go jump right into it. Let me see. No. You got a chatterbait rigged up. What are you up. doing? I'm just, uh, let me go show you what I got rigged up. Come on. All right. <laughs> now, how are you so, hey, now, wait, so whoa, you're whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa. You have, you have two rods rigged up for a challenge. I have 12. We got a, fishing so hard, I mean, so simple, sometimes I think we make it hard, and that's exactly what you've got going on. I have on. options, right man. Well, yeah, my, my, I have options. My good options are in my rod. I'm not as smart as you. Because today, today we've got a special little episode for you. Because what we're doing, we're here in South Carolina Elite Series Tournament, Santee Cooper. Matt is in 13th. I missed the cut. The tournament was canceled today due to high winds and a storm that's going to roll in this afternoon. So we're going to sneak out there on this little 10 acre pond here at the Clarendon Club and do a little one on one. You're in your boat, I'm in my boat. It's going to be a lot of fun, dude. I mean, this is how the whole SMC started. 16 years ago, I did my very first show against Mike Worm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And how'd that one end up? I beat him. What do you say? We're going to rewrite history. We're tied right we're now. We're going to rewrite history This will be the third one. You got me the first time. No, no got you, you got time. us the first time. You I got we, we got you. Cobb and I beat you and yes. Latimer at Hartwell the second time. So this is a tiebreaker. This is a tiebreaker. Tiebreaker and winner or loser, however you want to say it. There's an Instagram post involved, and we'll just leave it at that. I was going to say, we're going to have we're to talk about the details that. of that one. <laughs> All right, so this is supposed to be the tiebreaker, and what's going to be bad is when I beat him today on one leg, basically. We've been fighting the torn calf muscle all week during the Santee Cooper event, and uh, yeah, we're fix it's fixing to go down with one leg. Oh, there's a good one, dude. Oh my gosh. I got one. I got one by the ramp, dude. That counts too, by the way. No, that 100%. Oh, wait, 100 I'm in the water. No, 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 no. Yes, no. I'm in the water. No, 100% yeah, no, does not I, count. No, nothing. I'm in the water. That doesn't count. That's I don't even have my boat in the water yet. Yes, your boat's in the water. No, it's not. Your trailer's in the water. Get my boat on the trailer, 100% dry, does not count. You can't fish until I'm in the water. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Look at that. First cast, dude. You better hurry up. Don't put that fish in the live well. Oh, he's going in. I'll catch another one real quick. Right here. Watch this. Did you put that in the live well? You better hurry up. I already, already won down. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta. We gotta launch. Alright, guys. I you know, it's been a while since we've done a show like this. Just a good old-fashioned beat down right here. And we've already got one in the box, which is awesome. What am I going to throw today? I don't really know. Spinnerbait could be good. Flipping, of course. I haven't fished this lake, so I don't really know really what to expect right now. Throw a little square bill around just to cover water right off the bat. Up that first one, I have to ramp on <laughs> that hopeless crankbait. He's so mad right now. Running at me. Woo! <laughs> ah, we put a call tag on him. We're gonna have to get rid of that one. Yeah, he better not have kept that one at the dock. I'm gonna be a little upset about that. I do gotta beat him. I'm not kidding, guys. Of all the challenges that we've done over the last several years, this one right here means a lot for me to win. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull forward and my power pull down. Look at this big log, big stump, lay downs, big tree. 
get right here in the middle so I can like fish all this. Oh yeah. Oh my God. That was a giant, dude. Literally broke my line, dude. I literally flipped it in there and it went thunk. Got it, got it. Oh my God. Oh, yes. That's not the one. That is not the one. That is not the one. I don't know what I just had on, guys. I don't know how many big ones are in this pond, but I just had on, my line broke. 17 pound line. I hit that fish and it was going the other way and seesawed me and broke it, but that's a nice one there. We gotta beat this storm too. Number three, number three. We'll put this on the little side. This video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. That's right, the brand new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. This thing is awesome. The Manscaped products are the worldwide leader when it comes to men grooming needs. That's right, nine million men trust Manscaped. And if you do the math, that's 18 million. You know what I'm saying, right? So this thing is awesome, guys. I use it all the time. It helps my confidence. It helps me get clean, feeling good. Everything's great with it. But with the Ultra 5.0, there's so many cool features in this thing. I want to jump right into it and tell you all about it. With the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, they've taken precision grooming to the next level with their next gen dual skin safe blade heads, accompanied by an upgraded trimmer blade and interchangeable foil blades for enhanced performance. The upgraded trimmer blades feature a longer and wider and round rounder teeth that cut through the hair with ease. Tough on hair, but yet gentle on the skin. And now check this out, the hidden treasure, okay? It's the foil blades, that's right. It's crafted to transcend the boundaries of your typical trim. It glides over your skin, capturing even the finest hairs. This thing has got like a spotlight on it, guys, okay? No more like guessing in the dark. This thing lights up everything, so that way you can get a good, comfortable, safe trim. The Manscaped Lawnmower 5.0 looks amazing. It's an ergonomical design. It's lightweight, it's easy, easy to travel with. And like all the other products, it is waterproof. And that is real important. So you can rinse this thing off, you can take it in the shower, and you're not gonna have any issues. Now guys, all you have to do now is go over to manscaped.com, do forward slash Scott Martin, and you're gonna get 20% off on your Manscaped 5.0 Ultra. So check it out, guys. This thing's awesome. Thank you, Manscaped, for coming up with all these great products. We'll see you guys. Let's get back to the video. There's a lot of ridges. I'm watching my depth finder. It's ranging anywhere from five to two and a half feet. There we go. That's a, maybe a keeper right there. We'll stick her in the box. We have four in the boat right now. One good one we caught up the boat ramp. And I'm counting that, by the way, Matt. But, uh, We've only got a little bit of time. The storm's supposed to hit this afternoon, so we've got to catch big ones. There's a lot of fish in this lake. I, I mean, obviously, we've only been fishing a little bit. I'm gonna flip this jig and the bandito bug mostly uh, and see if I can't get a little bit bigger bite, you know, in and around these logs. These fish should be spawning a little bit. It's a full moon. And uh, that right there, plus the bandito bug, that should get, I think, the bigger bites. Big one. Come here, sweetie. That'll help the calls. That'll help the calls. Oh, that's a pretty one there. That's a lot bigger than what we got in the live well. So I'm gonna give y'all a little tip. This is really more about springtime fishing. We're in a little window. We're in South Carolina. It's March. And we're in a little window where the fish are first starting to pull up to do a little spawning. And when they do that, a lot of times you can't get them to chase real good. You can't get them to hit a moving bait. It's a, you know, it's, it's funny because one day they'll be eating a spinner bait or a bladed jig or, you know, a square bill or something really super, super good when they're set up pre-spawn. And when they actually start to lock down or get on beds, that's when you go to something slow, like a jig, Texas rig creature bait, something like that. And you got to slow down in order to irritate those fish into biting. Even out here in this dirty water where we can't see them spawning, we know they're spawning because of where they're set up and how they're biting. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Game changer, baby. Oh, my, oh I'm crippled and I can't get it. <laughs> Got my power pumps. Well, that took, a, that took a little bite out of my leg. But, that's good. Oh, Hollywood, you better be catching me. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, yeah, oh my gosh, dude. It's a giant, dude. It's a giant. It's a giant. It's a freaking monster. Look at this one, guys. Oh my gosh. Oh, please stay on there. Please stay on there. Please stay on there. Yeah! Yeah! Golly, dude. Look at that one. Look at that fish, guys! Bandito bug. Oh, that area. Can you see this one from here, dude? That's a freaking tank, bro. Whoa! Look at that. Guys, the Claritin Club's got some monsters in it, dude. That's what I'm talking about. Put her on the big side. I'm not real sure what to do. I see him catching a lot of fish over there, but. All I do know is if I keep catching the greatest fish like that, I can't be beat. 100% can't be beat. That's a big one and there's more. I hung a big one earlier and then that one. So I just need to keep doing what I'm doing. There's a lot of fish in this, in this lake, but it's not about how many we catch. It's about how big they are. Yeah, that can help a little bit. I mean, that's a telltale sign of one that's probably spawning. All beat up. Oh, that hadn't seen better days right there. That one's seen better days. But he's bigger than some of the ones I got in live well. Uh, yellow. Calling that one, long and skinny fish. But as long as we're on the move up, we're on the right move. Hope I don't get that one hung. I'm not gonna get it hung when I flip it in there and the bass eats it. Something hit him, look at that. That's probably where like an osprey or something got a hold of him. Ended up dropping him, getting him halfway out. I bet that's where a, some type of bird of prey probably got a hold of him there. Either that or a gator, cause there's gators down here. All right, I'm flipping the the bandito bug, this is green pumpkin blue. What I'm doing, a little tip, especially in the spring, most important in the spring, add a little chartreuse to the bottom end of the legs of the bait you're fishing with. Okay, see that little bit? Don't put too much, just a little bit on both sides. That is real important, guys, because in the spring, fish are up shallow, they're spawning, they're doing their thing. But so are the bluegill. And those bluegill, those bass hate, they like to eat them, they like to run them off their beds, and that little bit of chartreuse on the tip there makes this bait look like a crawdad, but it also looks like a bluegill coming through the water. And that's why that bandito bug is so versatile. Put a little chartreuse on the tip of your green pumpkin will make all the difference in the world. Another good one, dude. Another pretty good one right there, guys. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, look at that one. Yeah! <laughs> There's a lot of floating logs on this bank. And I hadn't been getting bit on those, but there's a couple right there that are, you can tell that they're sunk down in the dirt. And when I got to those, I'm like, I'm gonna get a bite right there. Sure enough, I did. That helps the cause. Look, oh, look at this thing. He spit up a shad, dude. That bass spit up a giant, that's a gizzard shad. If they're eating that size baits, we can catch them on big swim baits or something. I don't know if I have a big swim bait in this boat, but I'm gonna look. Okay, after seeing that big gizzard shad, I start off throwing this little square bill because a lot of times in these ponds, bait's kind of small, they eat small things. That fish just showed me what it's eating. So check this one out. That is a Guggen Squad crankbait, runs three to seven. That's the big one, it's the Grande Banger. 
Listen to it. Oh yeah. I'm gonna chunk this thing around, wobble it around. This bank right here. That's as close as I can get to that size bait. This could be a good move right here. Look at the vibration this thing has. Just wobble, boom, 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 boom. Big bait, big wobble. Big fish, hopefully. Matt won't be able to hang. We get one of these big dudes on this thing. Got him, got him. Big one, dude, big one, real big one, real big one. Oh my gosh, it's on the big crankbait too. Come on, baby, come on. Another giant, dude. That's awesome, guys. Don't come off, dude, he's got one hook. Just got one hook. Another giant. Wanna play him easy, play him easy. Just bring him around this way. Get this out of the way. Come here, dude, come here. Oh my gosh, he's barely hooked, he's barely hooked. Put that on, guys. I put that on. Another big one. Another big one. That helps a lot. That grande banger right there, guys. Another big old bass. Look at that thing. That was awesome. Okay. You know, people ask me all the time, Scott, how do you keep your boat and truck looking clean? You know, we put, I don't know, 30, 40,000 miles a year traveling around fishing these tournaments and shooting SMCs. But I use the Starbright line of cleaners for just about everything. But the, some of the ones that I really like is Vinyl Clean and Vinyl Guard. This right here, this combination is awesome. It keeps, of course, my vinyl wrap looking sharp and, and really keeps everything looking really good. And the other one that I use on a regular basis is Boat Guard. This is like a, a speed detailer. Keeps everything good and clean. It's an easy way to, to apply. You just wipe it on, wipe it off. It's really, really good. And then, you know, keeping my units looking sharp, finding those fish, I use the Starbright screen cleaner and protectant, and that keeps the Garmin screens looking really, really sharp. Now, the last thing, and I have to give a big shout out to Startron. This stuff right here is amazing, guys. You know, we deal with ethanol issues a lot traveling around. Sometimes you can't find ethanol free fuel. So I use the Startron enzyme fuel treatment. This is fuel based, it's amazing. So check out Starbright and Startron next time you're at your local store. This stuff's amazing. Got it. Another big one. Another big one. Oh my goodness, dude. Look at this one. Oh. oh. Guys. Guys. Fellas. Ladies. Matt. Do you see what is eaten? The banger, dude, that. We see a shad that big floating in the water. We tie on something that replicates the size of the bait they're eating. And all of a sudden, we're jacking jack donkeys, dude. Swamp donkeys. So we came down through this water, fishing slow. We think the majority of fish are spawning right now in the spawning stage, so we been dragging a jig around, hopping a jig around, getting most of our bites. But when you go back through water you've already fished, you know, the biggest thing is making sure you change something up. Um, you know, a lot of people make the mistake, they go down the bank with a jig or Texas rig or spinnerbait or crankbait or whatever it is. They go down a stretch, they catch a few fish, and then they leave. You know, they don't go back down it with a different presentation. A lot of times you're leaving fish that are, <clears throat> that are untapped because for whatever reason, you didn't have the right presentation. So we're going back through this area, slow rolling a chatterbait, bladed jig around, and um, seeing if we can't pick up one or two more. Because especially in a tournament situation, that could be the difference in first and seventh place, just that one more bite, one extra bite. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Game changer. Don't come off, come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> we can't show Scott. We're gonna keep it down low. Oh. Oh. 
Sorry, I get really jacked up when I know Hollywood and I are in a head-to-head. -head. Right, we're gonna power pull down right here, guys. This is where I lost one this morning. We're gonna fish this for a couple more minutes and then we're gonna go back to the boat ramp. We're gonna see who's gonna win this challenge. Hopefully, I've got him. I've got some nice fish. We'll see what happens, but uh, a lot of fun, no matter what. But we got we got to beat old Matt. All right, let's see if I can get this fish to bite again. Oh my gosh, bit it again. That's her, dude. That really is her. This is the one that broke me off. No, it's not the one that broke me off. <laughs> That's it. Let's go back to the ramp. Let's see who won. I thought that was her, dude. Dude, was that fun or what? It's always fun. The Claritin Club, stretch. this pond, I'm so glad they let us come out here and do this. This one had a lot of fish. It's chock full of I them. I mean, ridiculous, dude. I mean, I don't know how many you caught, but I mean, there, there's way more than we caught we could put it on film. I mean, yeah, it was like for sure. a lot. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, dude, it's the best five, and I want to beat you, and I, I know you want to beat me <laughs> for bragging rights. <laughs> we got three quarters of the elite season left, and we have to room together. So you know where this is going to go. <laughs> Regardless. <laughs> I know. And I wish Canterbury was here because if he was here, we'd do a three boat challenge and that'd be a lot of fun. But I know you've got five. I know you caught five. What, and I'll tell you what mine weigh first and then you tell me what yours weigh, okay? All right. All right. My fish weigh 14.1. Really? Yeah. 16.2. Really? 16.2. 16.2? 16.2. But no, 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 but that's only with four. Wait, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's lying. That's only with four. He's lying. Because my fifth one was that one right there that weighed it? six, 12, 512, sorry, 512, 512, dude. That gives me 20 pounds, 13 ounces. I don't know if I believe this. Bam! You can look in there. You can look in there. Oh, you got all oh, your fish still in there? Oh, I got them all, dude. I got them all. Okay. I got them all. All right, so, all. so here's the problem. I was told to go one. to the left side of the lake. <laughs> Scott was told to go to the right side of the lake because no, it's not I as wasn't. good. I wasn't. I did not. I figured out something. I figured out something. They watched it. It was cool. It was just a moment. I found a big gizzard shed. It spit up a gizzard shed that big. I put on a giant square bill, dude, like a big old square bill. Yeah, I almost tied on a square bill. Dude. Boom, boom, boom. All those big ones over there. We talked about it a little bit. Yep. We talked about tying on a square bill and going through the trees. I actually pounds, caught my two. Uh, did I cut my two biggest ones on a. On a chatterbait, bladed jigs. Yeah. I got, I, I got to show them, right? Okay, yeah, I, I show them. I, mean, I, I had two pretty ones. Man, those are nice, dude. Look at that. That one. is awesome. Big old pre-spawn yep. fish. Caught her on the outside trees. Yeah, yep. that's awesome. Pretty fish in this lake. Hey, I know your family's coming into town. The storm is approaching. It's coming fast. But dude, good job. I can't wait for that Instagram post. Well, we didn't really clarify that, so am I free to say <laughs> oh, whatever? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be making the post okay. for your page. <laughs> so guys, thanks for watching the Scott Martin Challenge. We had an absolute blast. And hopefully you learned a few things today about fishing. You saw the adjustments that we made. You saw how we caught fish today. So stay tuned next week. We're going to be on a new lake with a whole new challenge, guys. Thanks for watching the Scott Martin Challenge. We'll see you. Dude, how about that? You were like this. You were like this. I got it. I really thought I, I did have it. I really I thought went, I did. Bam! <laughs> that was dirty. <laughs>